Hello and welcome to this anatomy video. Today we'll be discussing the different craniometric points located on the skull. This video is made specifically for the advanced anatomy students. So if you're a student that's in the general gross anatomy class, go ahead and leave this video because you won't be tested on any of these terms. Um, go ahead and study the other videos that are discussing different landmarks found in different body systems. However, if you're in advanced anatomy, this is going to be an important video for you and a hopefully a helpful study tool as you learn the different craniometric points. So what I'm going to do in these videos is that I'm going to start by going over all the craniometric points found on the mid-sagittal plane because there's quite a few of them. After I identify the ones on the mid-sagittal plane, I'll go ahead and identify all the remaining um, craniometric points. So starting on the inferior most part of the skull here on the mandible, we have our first craniometric point, which is called the nathion. Again, the most inferior point on the mid-sagittal plane is called the nathion. Now if we keep on following the midline, we have on the anterior aspect, the most anterior aspect on the midline of the mandible, we have the pogonion. Now if we continue going superior, underneath these two inferior incisor teeth, central incisor teeth, we have our next craniometric point. This craniometric point is called the infradentale. Now if we go up to this point right here where these two central incisor teeth, the superior incisor teeth, where they connect down right here where this connection, this articulation is found, this is called the incision. All right, let's go ahead and zoom this image out just a little bit more. This next craniometric point is kind of hard to, to see in this image, but I'll try to identify it to the best I can. Right here on the midline again, just right here on the alveolar process, on the most inferior tip of, the, of this alveolar process of the maxilla, this is called alveolare. And I believe that's how it's pronounced, alveolare. Now just barely superior to the alveolare, we have our next craniometric point. This is called the prostheon, which is the most anterior point of the, on the mid-sagittal plane on the alveolar process in the maxilla. So the alveolare was the most inferior point, and the prostheon is the most anterior point on this alveolar process. Now right here we have a landmark that we haven't learned yet and this is called the anterior nasal spine, okay? This is called the anterior nasal spine of the maxilla, which is not a name of the craniometric point, but on the inferior most portion of this anterior nasal spine of the maxilla, this is going to be called the nasospinale. The next craniometric point is just superior to the nasospinale, and it's actually the very tip of the anterior nasal spine, uh, which forms part of the anterior nasal aperture. So the most anterior point of this protrusion right here, that's going to be called the acantheon. The next craniometric point is this most superior and anterior point on the anterior nasal aperture. So this most anterior superior point of the anterior, na anterior nasal aperture, this is called the rhinion. Now the next craniometric point is located right here. So right here we can see the frontal nasal suture and on the anterior most part found on the mid-sagittal plane on the frontal nasal suture right here, this is called the nasion. Okay, let me go ahead now and, and zoom back our image a little bit more. Now, superior to the nasion on the frontal bone, we have this little bump right here. And you can actually palpate it and, and feel this little bump. Now, this anterior most point on the frontal bone, on the mid-sagittal plane, 
This is called the glabella. Now right here in the center of the fronds or the forehead, just above the superciliary arch of the frontal bone, we have our next craniometric point, and this is called the ophrion. Awesome, now we're gonna go ahead and change images so we can identify more craniometric points found on the mid-sagittal plane. So now in this image, we see a lateral view of the skull, and the next craniometric point is located at the intersection between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture. So located right here. This craniometric point is called the bregma. Just a few centimeters um, posterior to the bregma, again along the mid-sagittal plane, is the highest point of the skull. This is called the vertex. However, there is one additional cranial metric point that is very similar to the vertex. But before I'm able to identify the apex, I need to discuss one extra term. So let me go ahead and zoom out in this image. So we here can see the skull in its entirety. And there is this plane that we need to learn. It's called the Frankfurt horizontal plane. And where this plane is located, it's located at the most inferior margin of the bony orbit and the most superior portion of the external acoustic meatus of the temporal bone. So let me go ahead and draw a perfectly straight line uh, between these two. So we can see clearly this line. Again, this is called the Frankfurt horizontal plane. If we were able to tilt this image and make this plane at a perfect 90 degree angle, then the next highest point on the skull would be located probably just right around here. So, when the skull is in the Frankfurt horizontal plane, the vertex is no longer the most superior point on the skull. The apex would be. Okay, so a lot of students get confused between the vertex and the apex, and that's the difference. When the skull is in the Frankfurt horizontal plane, so in this case, the head would have to be tilted just a little bit forward, then the apex would be the next no, it would be the most superior point on the skull, and that's what the apex is. Cool, now let's go ahead and move on to the next image so we can see a better posterior view of the skull. Now this image gives us a view of the posterior aspect of the skull, and we can see uh, the, the sagittal suture as well as the lambdoid suture. We can also see these two tiny little foramen called parietal foramen. Now down the sagittal suture, and in between the parietal foramina, is our next chronometric point, and it's called the obelion. The next chronometric point is where the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture intersect, so right here, down in the mid sagittal plane, so just right about there. That is going to be called the lambda. Now, if we go inferior to the lambda and find the most posterior point of the skull, which will probably be found right around here, again down the mid sagittal plane. This craniometric point is called the epistocranion. If we continue going down more inferiorly, we can see the external protuberance of the occipital bone, which is located right here. Now, if we are just inferior to it on the underside of that protuberance, that is called the ineon. Awesome. And those are all the different craniometric points found in the posterior aspect of the skull. So we can go ahead and move on to the next image. Now in this image, we're gonna discuss the last six craniometric landmarks um, for this video. There are definitely more craniometric points that we'll discuss in a different video. But again, like I said in the beginning, um, I'm only discussing all the craniometric points located on the mid sagittal plane. So in this image, we can see an inferior view of the skull and I've removed the mandible because the mandible would be covering up some of the craniometric points that we need to identify. The first one is called the orale and it's located on the posterior aspect of where the incisor teeth would be. So right here in red just behind the incisor teeth posteriorly this would be, this would be called the orale. The next craniometric point is located 
on the palatine bone. It is located on the midline point between the posterior alveolar ridges found on the bony palate. Now that might sound confusing, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line again to demonstrate where this, um, where this line would intersect. So in blue, I've draw, I have drawn a line um, where the posterior aspect of the alveolar processes of these uh, molar teeth would be. Now again, this is a craniometric point found in the midline. So right here is where the alveolon would be located. The next craniometric point is located at the most posterior aspect of the palatine bones, right here at the very tip. This is going to be called the staphylion. Now if we go ahead and zoom up to the occipital bone, we have three craniometric points um, that we need to learn. Right here on the most anterior point of the anterior margin of the foramen magnum of the occipital bone, this craniometric point is going to be called the basion. Now, like I said, this is located on the anterior ridge line of the margin of the foramen magnum. So right here on the posterior aspect of the anterior margin of the foramen magnum, this is going to be called the endobasion. The last craniometric point of this video is located on the midline point on the posterior margin of the foramen magnum. So just right here. This is called the opistheon. Now don't get this term confused with, with the opistocranion, which is located on the posterior aspect of the occipital bone, the most posterior aspect on the occipital bone, where this is the most posterior aspect of the posterior margin of the foramen magnum. Awesome. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll be publishing out the next video soon. Take care.